let me go back to the documentation now. Yes, as I said, you are going to cover these steps right now. So let's see uh, what the traditional software development lifecycle does. Sorry. <clears throat> Developers are going to create an application. As I said, operation team is going to deploy the application to their infrastructure. So everyone has their responsibilities. For example, what is the responsibility of the developer here? So you're going to take the requirements from their manager or they're going to manage their team and they're going to split their tasks and they're going to start uh, uh, implementing the features and then collaborating with the team and maintaining the proper source repos and proper versioning and uh, they're going to test their proper code at, the co at their at their uh, development level, writing some unit test cases, uh, which can which has to be done by the de developer itself, and they're going to pass code to the operation team. What operation team is to do? Operation team is to collect their, the code from the developer which has provided, and they're going to create some environments based upon the uh, client required. Like we have, like most probably we have three environments. You can have four also, but there is no. Uh, Restrictions that you can you have to have only three you have to do it's according to the organization policies according to this according to the uh, client uh, requirement. So as example, as simple we can say it as we have dev, uh, we can have UAT and we have the uh, production environment. So all these three environments will be created by the operation team and they're gonna deploy our changes to the dev and dev will be tested by the developers and then it goes to the UAT and the operation team will help us to to uh, deploy these changes to the uh, <clears throat> UAT environment from the UAT it goes to the production environment. So not only that, moreover that if the traffic is more, we should require some memories. We should require some the CPU usage. So who is going to take care? Operation team will be taken care. So operation team is going to continuously monitor your production your production resources. If something happens, he is responsible for that, and they're going to validate. They're going to uh, monitor their performance. And not only that, they're going to deploy your application and, and the data, database itself. Everything is going to uh, taken care by the uh, operation team. Let's see uh, how this water waterfall model uh, is not right now. We are not following anyone is in or anywhere in the organization. It's very pre pretty old, but let us understand how we came across to the agile model. What are the disadvantages uh, following this model, okay? And how we came through the Agile model, Agile methodology. And you see here, so there are stages like five stages, and you see the direction, even the diagram shows here water model structure, like line by line. After this, after this, after this, after this. The, the diagram, it constructs in a, like how the water flows up to down. Same way, your diagram also lies same way, okay? So the stage you have the, Requirement, requirement analysis. That means you're gonna gather your requirement information from your client, okay? And they have some specific person with like we call it as business analyst, maybe whoever has the specific to gather gather some information from the client. You're gonna create some proper documentation after gathering of all your requirement, after gathering of all features what need to be there, to be there, and we move to the some other architects who are there in their organizations. What they're gonna do? They will decide whether we need to. Uh, Put this application in uh, either in a Java or PHP or .NET or something else. Maybe what database we have to use backend. So I should go for MS Excel or Cosmos DB or Oracle or MySQL. This architect is gonna gonna decide. And what type of architecture I have to decide in my application? If it was .NET, whether I have to implement a ASP.NET Core with MVC model or uh, I'm gonna use some client side and server side programming. So this design structure will be taken care of by your architecture. After completion, it goes to the development. From the development, they'll split their task and they'll start implementing the future by future. And then after completion of all your development, it goes to your test stage. In the test stage, uh, maybe in between, you should create some UI test case also. You should test your code properly and we're gonna check some vulnerabilities at least. And then we're gonna move this to the uh, test stage. In the test stage, uh, your testing, uh, person is going to test all your application or they do some automation or they do some UI test cases by some Selenium or some other thing. If it was if it was the client side, they're going to test uh, with some other in your third party libraries, which is available to test the client side libraries. And then later it's going to deployment. But what, you, what I want to say is, see, to complete the gathering information, it may take one month. So until then, uh, 
after like until then you, you after gathering information it goes to the design part and after then only you go to development then only you go to testing and then only your client going to see your output it's it's a very big deal again uh, again it takes so much of time like see uh, it took for one month for requirement only when when we can deploy the application okay and now after completion of your five months we have de- we have created some application and and we are, we are trying to show the client client says sir i don't want this i don't want this change again what you'll do again you go to the requirement again you make some change in design again you come back to development again you come to the testing again to the main not maintenance maintenance will be happen after uh, after your application is finished okay so there there the, there are lot of issues why because we are receiving the feedback at last after you testing your application so there, there is no any uh, parallel process happening okay at this uh, uh, methodology okay that's only the reason uh, instead of uh, instead of reducing all this um, extra activities so like we we going we, we are trying to go for the agile methodology okay so not now maybe it's like at 10 years back uh, which is which we have which we have done uh, this type of methodologies for the an application but uh, an application like if an application is a small one so a one person can be done but what if if application is a bigger and if if 10 te- 10 people are working and 10 teams are working then there should be some process to be handled there should be some person should be handled why because uh, we should know what's happening daily and we should have to fix our goals and we have to complete according to the the client there should be some process to be handled so that's a place where people have used uh, this methodologies has be happen but this methodology has some issues that's the only reason they have found some drag backs like so again moving from one team to one another team is not easy so they have again some process every organization have some process again you have to follow the steps again after coming to here again you have to move to uh, step 3 if again they have some methodologies have to be followed and it's not easy okay so that's the one reason uh, it's a few reasons we have seen now and we are trying to move for the agile methodology now let's see what is an agile methodology so we create some uh, let's see what is agile so agile is a process by which team can able to manage a project by breaking it into several stages nothing but we can call it as a sprint every sprint will be like uh, one week to i think seven days to 14 days so what what will happen is within this 14 days or within this seven days we go on a split task and not only that we go on a collaborate everyone in this process like uh, for example in the wa- water flow model what happen is uh, when the requirement is happening so design person will not involve development person will not involve and testing person not ha- will not, will not going to involve only the uh, the message is happening between only the requirement analyst person and the client person no one is going to involve in these meetings so but that will be a problem why because if these people are getting involved they will know what is happening complete picture will be there for example a testing person is involved for from the starting he can do end to end proper testing he can know what loopholes are in the system so they can able to report proper bugs instead of reporting the bugs from the end user point of and if i come if i come back to the agile methodology there is a diagram called uh, if i scroll down yeah you will see this one see and so we going to collaborate everyone here it's not like uh, you should only attend uh, you should only have the tester you should only have the development person but here we'll have everyone so from from you we'll start from the brainstorm brainstorm is nothing but we'll gather the requirement with the help of the client even at this place also uh, like you you'll have all the roles people is going to involve here every team person will be involved here and then you going you going to create some design and then you going to do some development and then you can do some ui test cases and then you going to do some deployment after deploying immediately within the sprint only maybe every 15 days or every 20 days or at least a month you going to show some output to the end user end user nothing but your client so again client will give some feedback again this loop will start okay so end of the day what my point is you try to satisfy your customer and you should provide some you should give some good product to your end user okay and yeah we should we should have we'll have but in this process what will is in this while while you are process, while performing this process uh, you will have some better product end of the day why because you don't need to blame each other at all because instead of completing a product fi- after five months and getting a change yes again redeploying this a uh, lot better than this this will be a lot better than uh, what whatever fall has matter why why because we are splitting 
we are splitting the task into uh, multiple stages okay and we are also involving everyone here so everyone is responsible for everything and also we are trying to create some ci cd pipelines so we are trying to showcase continuous integration to the uh, your repos and also we are trying to do some continuous delivery to the end user yeah but all this operation will be happen multiple iteration like see one product will ha happen within 3 years some product will do like 2 years some product will happen one year or some product might have done it in a two months also it depends upon the requirement and its size okay so even team size also will depend like uh, if if a five people and so in even the, based on that also your product with length will decide okay if a people have 100 people and the product size also will decide and yeah but to to do all this there should be some manager it's not like i can send i cannot handle there should be some manager to handle this up that's the place where you comes in the scrum managers like scrum manager will will going to conduct their uh, every day scrums and they going to check what task it is happening and they they want to contact with the managers and manager is going to create some assigning the task to the their team leads and the team leads is going to handle the teams and then once the testing once the changes are done it goes to the uh, to the follow the test the test is going to test and then the changes is going to move to the dev environment so there a lot of process there there should be some person there should be some mentor should be there so the place where they will have uh, according to the according to the organization uh, this role will be changed okay some people call a scrum master some might, some people will manager who will take care of everything maybe some people will have architects will decide so based on the organization role this will change okay so yeah so then what is the devops here devops is nothing but development plus operations combination of both dev ops okay development plus operation so what they say is that devops is not a software it's not something like a job title it's not a process or it is not a technology okay what they say is devops is an idea or collaborating okay planning smarter collaborating better and shifting faster with a set of modern dev, dev service to the end user how fast we can do how fast application can be deployed how accurately we are trying to use the resources like uh, in a team we have five people mostly four people are working one will be free there should be some planning that's what you have to plan smarter collaborate better and shift faster with using your modern dev services the modern dev services nothing but which are the resources available from the microsoft or it can be aws or it can be gcp so using those tools maybe using the software proper software in tools you should be able to produce some better output end of the day why we are doing all this you should produce some better output okay so yeah devops in as idea thinking to work in a certain way that could solve the problems of both developers and the it operation we should not blame each other okay like developer has coded and uh, it people have deployed so suddenly traffic has increased or might be uh, application running slow it it people should not blame that developer that you have not, you are not written the code properly and developer should not blame that it person that uh, you know it's not you are, you are not given enough resource for the or enough memory or enough cpu usage for my application you should not blame like that so instead of doing that if you are if you have collaborated better way so you end up end output will be you'll be you'll be in a better way okay at at microsoft what devops is devops is a union of people process and the product to enable continuous delivery and providing a better value providing a better value to the end user devops is like a continuous journey so this not stop at all so like we will follow for every project we will not stop at one place not like a soft they said it's not a process so it's not a technical stage even maintenance also you'll check you'll monitor at least okay at least it person will do some maintenance and uh, they'll check uh, monthly monthly uh, things sandeep your voice is breaking yeah another development and the sandeep you are, uh, we are not able to hear you you looks like some network issue at your uh, from where So let me check. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I think it should be better. Still, it's same. I'll change my network. Okay. Still, it's yeah, same. Yeah, Can you hear me? Yeah, it's better now, Sandeep. Can you hear me, Sandeep? Yeah, yeah, we can. Hear, I can yeah, hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, Sandeep, my question here is actually so, like here we are saying that uh, it's not a title; it's a union of people, process, and together. The software. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, together. So, when we say that uh, the person uh, is soft, is DevOps engineer, then what is that meaning? A, a single identity we are treating as a DevOps engineer, but here uh, it's something different. So. Uh, that's a. Yeah, did you get my question, Sandeep? I think your voice is still. We lost you. Breaking. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me properly now? I think I've changed my internet. Yeah, uh, yeah it now it's be better. better. Yeah. Even signal yeah, also. I'll answer your question. Yes, please. I'll answer your question uh, because there is a topic called uh, what DevOps engineer can do. Yeah, what DevOps people can do. It's not uh, basically DevOps engineer should do all, all these steps. Like you should have some knowledge on the uh, development also. Why? Because when I create some continuous integration pipeline, CA pipelines. You should know what type of language it is. At least some basic one program language. If he knows, we, then only you can create all all these DevOps pipeline steps. Without having knowledge, it's very hard to sustain, and it's not that easy uh, to create those CI pipelines. Not only that, if you have minimalistic knowledge on infrastructure, that will be easy to create some infrastructure as a code pipelines. That means with the help of the code only you will you are gonna you gonna create some infrastructures. At Azure or GCP or Amazon purpose, at Amazon level. So uh, you should have both. Minimalist, at least one. If you are good at one, if you have some minimalistic knowledge on other, it's fine. But it's not that if you don't have any of this knowledge, then you can't uh, go for uh, DevOps engineer expert. Like you can't be a, dev a DevOps engineer. Okay. So what they say is DevOps is not a job. Uh, it's not for particular only for developer like something. Is, it's combination of uh, everything, all three. I think I can say it as. And you see the diagram. See how it goes. It starts from your planning. You should have some proper and smart planning should be there. That's the first step you have to do. And then you have to do implement. You should start implementing your futures. From there, you should. Then it goes to the build. After building, you should do testing. From that goes to re release. Okay, from release it goes to deployment. 
their user might have used or you going to create some test cases by you your test test diagram uh, we are just seeing the steps actually not able to see any diagram oh, yeah. okay we are able to see the diagram yes sir able to see yeah we can see diagram we can see diagram we can yeah yeah i think just region once okay it still repeats we can see I, if not i'll region once okay please region once and then we going to release we going to deploy and here user might have used or you can get some feedback from your client side or from the your tester base or might uh, might be uh, from other part and again you going to monitor your resources how it is happening what analytics from your application you will get some feedback again you can you create some plan that means you, you create a sprint for 7 days or 14 days or or maybe a uh, 20 days it depends upon your architecture or your scrum master and your manager will decide okay and uh, it's it depends upon your feature like one feature may takes like 7 days one feature may take two days so they will create a bunch of features into one sprint and they going to create some release like every friday i think every friday we going to some release or maybe every 15 days we create some releases okay and yeah this diagram tells everything how uh, development come this operation is getting collaborate each other and uh, creating some a better product so not only that if some issues there some technical changes are there or maybe uh, any other issue it's very easy to uh, monitor the things okay so yeah even to follow the devops we should have some good practices you should also follow some proper software tools should be there if i get you the uh, let me put this one this devops one on the azure devops one if you are focusing on azure devops like they also provide some uh, proper tools like if you want to manage your project okay like i want to assign task to my colleague i want to assign this to an xyz from there i want to check whether this task is completed or not and then after i have assigned this task to the uh, uh, tester people or not if test is created proper properly uh, bugs or not proper issues or not whether this issues are solved or not there should be some monitoring tool that the place where we use azure boards if it was other one you might have used jira also they are available uh, agile tools are there uh, you can use any of those maybe you can go for jira or what out the market has you can decide okay but azure has uh font for azure boards yeah this will help us you to uh to deliver your your task with a faster way and you can plan you can track you can track and discuss across your team with the help of azure boards so this tool is more important okay and there should be a version control also why because you're collaborating so if it come back to the development uh, i should i should i should work my colleague also should work okay so i would like to share feature one to him and feature two to me there should be some machine tool that the place where if we, if you are in azure we going to use azure repos or you can also use any github or you can use uh, some other any uh, git enabled in uh, git enabled environments maybe someone is little uh, traditional project they might have used tfs also or maybe scns also okay but right now azure devops has support for tfs and the uh, git so yeah you should have some version controlling and then we have some continuous integration so what what is continuous integration here what trying what are, what are the things we are trying to do here we are trying to automate the process here okay instead of uh, putting uh, putting uh, one name here we are just trying to automate the process what we are trying to automate we are trying to automate your build we are trying to automate the test cases and we are trying to automate your continuous delivery okay so we going to test we going to configure we can deploy and we going to push these changes to the dev qa and production what continuous integration does what is this build what is this for example if i go for any uh, project of i, I would like to show the i'm well at csha so i would like to show the csha project okay this is my application let us think some xyz application this is a code how, how should i deploy how should i deploy, how should i build in your local environment what you do is is to say right click and uh, build this this is your manual steps you to do in your uh, uh, local environment so what are the steps i have done now the same steps has to be automated at your pipeline level they have built in tasks are available from the devops only it's very easy and they have they have given enough tasks for us to do all these steps i'm just for i'm just right 
right now i'm trying to showcase you a, a regular as ground core application if it was a java you should have some eclipse and you to do all those steps okay so what are the language it doesn't matter we have enough steps to automate like enough steps to automate your build task enough steps to to uh, automate your test case which is available there okay but right now what are thing we are doing now everything can be done at uh, continuous integration okay we get some changes like me and my colleague was working on feature one feature two we, all the features will uh, uh, put into your master plan something like this see i am working on feature one my colleague is working on feature two all comes to the master plan at last and this master plan will be published to the uh, dev from dev after dev we will we'll, we'll do some proper testing i'll get some approvals that should i publish to uat or not from the client or the managers and the uat it goes to the production yeah <clears throat> and also you can do continuous monitoring also if someone is well at uh, infrastructure side uh, so we we want to do a lot of monitoring should be there why because we should know uh, what happens we should see the application performance we have to uh, produce some enough memory and enough cpss to the application if the, if the usage is more and the traffic is more we should ready for anything okay but yeah this this things infrastructure is going to take in care of it okay infrastructure people will be uh, taking care of these things yeah uh, if someone is still at uh, uh, what you call at the old methodologies and if someone want to implement to the agile methodologies and coming to the devop it's not that easy why because we need to collaborate and we need to talk together you can see uh, new challenges and we going to conduct everyday meetings okay so we'll conduct daily meetings via teams or maybe slack whatever which are which is available and we going to plan adaptively like spin to spin the adaptive plan should be there we don't know what happens after one month we don't know what happens after two months there should be some proper adaptive plan should be there okay and yeah you should you should see the progress what happening that means you need to conduct daily scrum meetings okay and you going to check uh, everyone problems if there any show stopper you should understand and like manager and the team leader has to be come in the picture and should be able to solve the show stoppers if seriously the show shopper and we going to create some proper solutions okay and end of the day how how well we can do a project how effective we can be to a project and the project should be in a good shape end of the day okay again if i scroll back down as i shown you we have some dev dev practices which will have some uh, proper tools will be there with the help of this only we can do anything okay and as i said you will have challenge everywhere why because it's not that easy to uh, follow all these steps okay if someone is coming from very traditional uh, uh, development the transformation is more important yeah what are the benefits of uh, traditional what are the benefit of devops over the traditional it here you will have the speed that's what i'm trying to talk because right? you you plan smarter way you know Uh, how many people have to use dr for this for example see a sprint one can have 10 people sprint two will only can have seven people because you know how to plan and you know how much resource can be used for the uh, based on the sprints you might change for another project also if resources is three for sprint two immediately they will assign to another project it depends upon their uh, management skills from their scrum master and the uh, manager speed ra rapid delivery reliability and scale improved collaboration plus security which is more important okay we can't do something to the server and make uh, uh, crashable and uh, vulnerable to the end users which need to be consider the security come in the picture okay so even this also will be taken care by the uh, pipeline level only okay we have some vulnerability uh, scanners are available with the help of that task we going to check everything okay so we going to deploy Uh, more frequently as i said you uh, if you follow all these practices we can deploy like every 7 days or those steps and you can reduce the lead time from coming to deploy we can reduce change failure rate uh, why because uh, after following all these steps only we will will push your changes to the production until then the changes will not be gone okay so you you going to plan for uh, at what if the disaster comes those steps also will you will have some planning if you do proper planning you will have all these things okay 
And yeah, that's what the diagram shows. If you use the DevOps, what happened? And yeah, let's see how the CI/CD works here. See, you will have some code that which is getting dip, which is will be in the part of your version control. Any other version control, it like a TFS or maybe Git enable version controls. It can be GitHub, uh, but thing will be something like this only. Okay, or we might have used Azure repos in the part of Azure DevOps. Okay, so with the help of this code. Uh, I'll push into my Azure, Azure repo. I'll share this repository to the my multiple team people. They're gonna work on multiple features, and they will do some commits. Commit is nothing but what are the changes they do that should be pushed to the your repository. End of the day, that nothing but your commits, commits, and then those changes we gonna create some build pipeline. So in the build, based upon the language, based upon the Things the build pipeline is going to be changed. Okay, because I'm using the ASP.NET Core, you should use ASP.NET Core and C Sharp and .NET related tasks. If it was a Java, Java related build pipeline will be there. With that, I gonna create some test cases. Test case is nothing but your test cases. With the help of the test cases, I gonna check my code coverage, whether the code I have written properly or not, whether I'm trying to check each and every block properly or not. So I gonna see all things at the Test level. Once the test is happened, now the comes in the feature called Sonar Cube. Where Sonar Cube is nothing but you gonna check some vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities in the sense you might have installed uh, some XYZ package which causes the vulnerability. Okay. How will you know until if you are doing manually? Maybe until you go for uh, uh, until you go for the package manager, you will not know. But Sonar Cube is going to inform you and also whether your code has written a proper standard or not. Okay. So if like freshers are coming, they might have used hundred lines to implement on future, but that can be done in fifty lines. That can be done in ten lines also. So those analyzation will be there. How the syntax has written properly or not, whether we are using this syntax properly or not. So those tasks will be analyzed by the Sonar Cube. Okay. There's one more called white source. White source is nothing but in your application you might have using deprecated packages, and for deprecated packages you should use. Uh, but because deprecated will comes under the maintenance only. Even they will say that this package will be deprecated and this will be maintained only for two years. At least after two years, you should migrate for some other packages. If it is a Microsoft, Microsoft is going to provide some libraries. And those all those analysis, what is what? Then there is there is a task called white source. Uh, it's not mandatory that you should only use Sonar Cube. We should not use white source. These are the some some of the tasks which will include at your build pipeline. Okay, so you can use any other task. Uh, maybe some task might be paid, some by, some task might be free. So again, it decides your organization what to do, what not to do again. Okay. So these are things which will lie set your build pipeline. The build pipeline is nothing but continuous integration pipeline. Once all this build is succeeded, it gonna generate some artifact. Artifact is nothing but uh, like when when I say right click and fill, you go you gonna create some. Uh, Executable exe. Nothing but if I one second, I'll show you that. Right click and if I go back to the file explorer, I'm just showing you the uh, what contains after once the application is built, there should be some output. They we call it as executable content. Okay, something if I go for build folder and if I go for the release and right now I'm using the .NET 7. Okay, so and you will see this kind. This is the content which should be deployed to the my server. Okay. This nothing but we call it as a overall uh, uh, artifact. As per uh, yeah, once once you deploy, immediately we create a trigger that whenever a a new build is created, we'll try to publish these changes to the dev environment. At the dev place, what we will do is we'll test. As from developer end, we'll try to test some changes. Okay, our developers and might be your test. Your company test is going to test the changes. Once you get approval from your manager, see, it's not like uh, you can't push directly change to you. You can create some uh, approvals. Proper approvals can be created. Okay, after getting approval, you'll go to the QA, and again QA, your client gonna see the changes. Okay, you gonna conduct some meetings. Uh, with the help of some other any other teams or anything else, and your client comes in the picture, you're gonna see this your changes. Once your changes is approved, once client tester changes are approved, you're gonna push some other environment called stage from stage to production. Any of this, we call it as pre-prod. Instead of directly pushing the production, we'll test one more time in the pre-prod level, 
and then we're going to push to the production. So like this, we're going to do all the steps. So this is your CI pipeline. This is called CD pipeline. CD is nothing but continuous delivery, which. Yeah. So there are other tools are already available. So right now we are focused at Azure DevOps, so it will be so handy. If you are not interested in this part, you can also try something other tool which is available at market like Jenkins or maybe the maybe Amazon Chef or maybe Circle C8, Git, Git, GitLab pipelines and Atlassian Bamboo. Some other uh, pipelines are already available in the market. You can use any of those. Not mandated that you should follow. Okay. So right now we are talking a little in general only, not much biased on the Azure part. Okay. So Azure is going to provide. Uh, let me show the diagram before so on. Once again. This. I think. I missed it. One second, guys. Let me share the diagram. What Azure can support, okay? What Azure can support, you can support boards. That means you can manage all your tasks at level at this level instead of going out for Jira for some other things. You can manage here. Okay. It supports everything. And also you can create some documentation with the help of Wiki. Okay. And you can link those documentation to the according to the pipeline. You can create some versioning. All that management can be done in the year only. And also you can also create print management. You can also create some uh, work management. Like I have a 10 people, like every every like 10 people only work for four hours, like that uh, workforce and uh, work management can be done at the Azure board only, those items also even, okay? And then if you want to use Azure repository, there's a concept called Azure repos, which can be, you can use both. Either you can use TFS, it's not Git. I think Git is better, which is, uh, which have a lot of, uh, we'll discuss maybe in the, there is a module called uh, uh, Git. At that time, I'll discuss why, uh, why should only we use Git enable things? Why should not use the SVN and TFS? Those things will be covered there, okay? And also you can able to do uh, the pipeline. There's a concept called Azure pipelines. So with the help of Azure pipeline, you can create uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. And also you can create some test uh, test plans. And also you'll have some art artifacts. You can able to, yeah, those items can be done. You can deploy any language, not to be uh, one, one language. You can deploy any language, it can be a Python app, it can be anything. And also, you can also deploy to the any cloud provider. It need not to be Azure, okay? But right now, whatever I show at my examples is right now Azure, but yeah, you can deploy any other language. Not only that, your project is in Jira, your application in the GitHub, still your pipelines can be, Azure DevOps pipelines can be used, okay? You can get uh, uh, repository data from those, uh, repositories and still you can use these pipelines okay any anything can be possible here or you might only use only for boards are still it's possible you can use instead of you don't like azure repos yeah you can use github or any git stuff still it's possible it, it's a service which is provided by the uh, azure okay and uh, let me go back to the documentation now Yeah, I just I just told you that there. See how the how many DevOps tools are there uh, according to the uh, your applications. Okay, you have some Jenkins, you have Amazon Chef, which is used for uh, for that, and Puppet. Yeah, there, are, there are a lot of tools are available so to create uh, and follow some uh, process in the DevOps part. Okay, so yeah, you should have some some tools must be required. Like version control is mandatory. Okay, so which can able to collaborate your teams. Okay, they should have some, they should have some configuration management. They should have some resource monitoring. They should have able to provision the resources with the help of DevOps pipeline only. So yeah, we will discuss all. It's very high, very, very high level which we are saying right now. We are saying maybe at least after completion of five to six modules, you will understand what all those things. Okay, uh, that I can promise you. And then what a DevOps engineer can do. So right now, whatever I said right now, all this should be a part of your DevOps engineer. Okay, you should be able to do uh, building a pipeline. You should be able to do uh, deploy the stuff. All this has to be uh, nothing but we gonna create some automation. Okay, 
we going to create some automation task all this will be uh, handled by the devops engineer but things to become a devops engineer what they saying is if you have some knowledge on linux or windows administrator if someone has a program skill will be add on if someone has the idea of clone management skill it will be add on and someone has good good at experience in the container architecture will be helpful okay i think if you have minimalistic ideas is good but we'll try to uh, at, at this class we'll try to make everything will be covered okay uh, but if someone has an idea it's good and nothing as much and uh, which is also more important is some idea on the git at least tfs should be known at least svn should be known so and also we'll we'll try to get uh, things on all, all all other things okay and yeah will have some programmers and system administrator and cloud management yeah things to know become a uh, if if you know program still you can become devops engineer if somebody is coming from a system administrator you can become a devops engineer or cloud management you are doing like cloud side part and you are doing cli or azure cli or maybe you are doing some administrator at your cloud level yeah, you still you can be, you can become okay you are good. i think you your experience will be useful at uh, Uh, creating the uh, release pipelines. Okay, someone is good at Docker. Yeah, still th- those experiences also must be useful uh, for creating the doc uh, containerization applications. Okay, so yeah, I think I try to make a little short all this stuff. Yeah, and uh, if you are interested, if you want to know what is what, so this is the documentation. I'll share these links. Like uh, everything is available in the Microsoft only. Okay, and uh, I gonna share some. Uh, learning paths also. Let me copy this here and paste here, uh, like module by module. Right now, if you want to write a certification, there should be some learning from learning paths should be given Microsoft. So that's it here. So like they have given some modules. Uh, if if you are able to complete this module, then we should be able to uh, uh, tackle the uh, what you call. You can able to tackle this certification. See, right now they are giving introduction to DevOps. You just try to. read this part and they'll give some four to five choose the correct answers so this will help uh, an idea of this module okay and this should help for you i i'm going to say this url also and there is one more call uh, devops demo generator let me copy this url what is this if someone is new to devops uh, i think you might have, you will not have any full access to the everything so what they while they what they're trying to do is they're going to create a see azure devops demo generator you're going to help you to create your project that means they're going to create some build, uh, built in templates to practice the uh, cd pipelines or to practice boards or to practice uh, uh, deployment pipelines they will going to provide your templates for us okay so this is also very useful for uh, at starting stage because we, we will not have full access so you can use your identity and uh, yeah it's free i think let me sign in with my identity thing i have already logged in once again image yeah here it is after once you log in you will see this page see so i would like to choose a template which template you want to practice it's a in general there are so many are there okay so in general they they going to create some one dummy project with the help of aspnet and or maybe this with this they are using some scrum scrum master aspnet core azure app service so this demo generator will be so much helpful for Uh, at the learning stage, okay, they'll provide everything. They'll provide ARM templates. They'll give everything. Maybe I've already created. Let me show you that. Maybe if I go for the demo process, this is generated by the Azure DevOps demo generator, and they have created some wiki document. Let me check. No wiki document, but I think they have created some boards. Uh, how the task will be assigned to the teammates. they have already created some spring see how this task is getting assigned some basic information already they have given okay to make you understandable to make you practice to help you could you please give this link in the chat group i will to sure i'll, I'll provide yeah i'll provide everything for you after this class yeah so and also i think there are examples for this mm, yes 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 they are going to provide some templates to practice instead of doing from the scratch okay and if i go for the pipelines you will see yeah just to interrupt 
are you going to uh, give, give us a demo on this particular yes question? yes i gonna yes everything is gonna give us uh uh-huh. this uh, i'll i'll do tomorrow right because it's like how yeah. we are going to use this template if you can give sure, us sure. A i'll probably right. yeah maybe tomorrow class i'll cover this step why because i didn't get into actual other dev- devops one that is done i'll show you how this template is used okay and then some uh, building so this is also required yeah. subscription this demo one no no or i think it's yeah. free it's it's free yeah it's free. let okay. me go back to it should be free yeah i'll share everything now okay let me okay but this is for documentation if anything you have questions you just go for the other documentations okay and uh, forward this in the chat mm. paste here okay this should helpful for uh, uh, theoretical topics okay and there is one more uh, uh, site is there there is called azure uh, labs so devops labs so let me provide you that also so this also will helpful for sample examples which is powered by devops i'll share that also in the chat this is another link for devops labs you will get hands on experience and also if you are new you can use this demo gen- demo generator from there you can create some learning path Uh, i'll show you maybe tomorrow's class after explanation of the uh, right now i have only completed only one mod in the module we have completed on three topics there are few more things to be discussed there's a call about azure devops so which we gonna talk completely on the azure devops so let me complete these things i gonna show how this demo uh, demo te- de- data can be useful at our purpose but it's only for learning purpose okay this is the one and the other yeah you can also go for this uh, uh, learning path which is useful for uh, your certification purpose okay just go for this mod learning paths is this learning path is for not only for azure devops you can also go for any other things like you can go for blobs if you are well at blob storage you can go for that you can plan uh, for learning purpose see i can go for asp.com they're going to provide some learning path for uh, 